Wednesday, Wednesday, gonna get down on Wednesday, doing steps on Wednesday. Morning. Now, something to talk to you about just just very briefly. I um I didn't mention it yesterday because um on the anniversary I I get get quite emotional and I tend to keep my emotions to myself. Try and keep my emotions in check, you know, t- while doing the broadcast as obviously I don't want to upset any of the um more let's say um the listeners with a weaker constitution shall we say um but yesterday was the anniversary of the death of a very very dear and i'm proud to say personal friend of mine some know him as the perfect boy and he was snatched from us before his time in a cruel what can only be described as assassination Yesterday marks the three-year anniversary of the death of Harambe, the perfect boy, the ultimate gent, the absolute mad lad. And, you know, I shed my tears yesterday. I screamed. I punched a hole in a dry wall. You know, I did, I did what had to be done to get me through. And uh, it's hard. It will be hard every year. But we need to we need to learn from it. We need to well, we need to know why. Some say that he had information about nine eleven. Some say he had inf- information about the about the Clintons. Others say he knew what was up with the gay frogs. He knew what was turning the frogs gay. Some say he had information about who killed Prince. There's a lot of rumors flying around. All I know is that he was taken too soon and that he was the perfect boy. So, R.I.P. Harambe, R.I.P. in peace. R.I.P. Harambe, sipping on some bomb, baby. We on our way to heaven, amen, amen. R.I.P. Harambe, smoking on some strong, and Gorilla Zoo, and we thinking about you. All we ever do. Thinking about you, we back at the zoo, man. Thinking about you, man. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy and. That's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, please, please uh, press F to pay respects to the perfect boy, Harambe. Uh, he, he's still with us in many ways. Um, yeah, man, three years. That's rough. God, three years passes quick, right? Shit. Uh, Mr. Merck uh, was saying <clears throat> in the beginning, 60 episodes since episode 100. Yeah, this is episode 160. Can you even freaking imagine closer to episode 200 than 100 uh closer to episode uh, 50 though than to 80 um uh, i could go on but i won't i promise that i won't good a lot of people pressing f that is good that is what we need this is the sort of new version of thoughts and prayers isn't it it's a sort of troll version of thoughts and prayers uh one like equal one thought one share equal one prayer that is how the game works ladies and gentlemen um some good bits for you today, your fine wee lobster bastards. Um, laptop, uh, update on the laptop infested with all of the malware ever. Uh, sold for a million pounds at auction. That is unbelievable. Um, yeah, so keen to get into that. Uh, human-like robot will deliver parcels directly to your front door. But will it give you a handy? That's the question, isn't it? 
uh, former PhD student suing university for three million dollars for loss of sex drive. Jesus, if you could start sewing stuff for a loss of sex drive, that would basically be the end of the world. People would be suing each other. People would be suing. I mean, could you like, could you sue your partner for being ugly and therefore losing you your losing you your sex drive? Oh, it doesn't even bear thinking about. Um, God bless him, though, eh? Oh, gosh. Um, an Aladdin porn parody has been released, and it's called Aladdick. That is an absolutely dreadful pun. That really is bad. I um I went to see a gay panto many moons ago, which was called Aladdin, which was nice. I mean, there is... There is no more of a hoot to be had than a gay panto. They are an absolute riot. And um, they are undoubtedly that is the basic that the crude humour in gay panto puts coffee and memes to shame. It really does. I mean, maybe that's something we should work towards for maybe that should be like the Christmas uh, threshold lobster meetup. It should be it should be some sort of lobster based gay panto. I think there's legs in that. I definitely do. Uh, what do we have here? Um, American woman, stay away from me, uh, says uh, she'll never date British men because they're too short. All British men ever, I believe. They're too short and ignorant, apparently, and they drink too much. Thanks, American woman. Thanks for your unsolicited opinion. Great. Uh, leech smuggling. Canada finds man after 4,700 leeches carried on a plane. Good man, that's that's pretty cool. Um, what else we have? Um, the classic story um, of pig steals eighteen beers from campers, gets drunk, starts a fight with a cow. Um, oh, it has a rather sad ending though, so uh, you know, just again, be prepared to press F to pay respects. And schoolboy wakes up from three week coma after smelling favourite Lynx deodorant. Um, keen to get into that. Nine reasons why men live longer than women. Uh, sure, this will be a laugh riot. Uh, and any other little bits and bobs? Oh, that seagull stealing the bread from pound land and woman tasting penis shaped clam. Um, he's truly disgusting, actually. We should get into that. That is, um, yeah, weird. I, I mean, it's an enormous clam, and it, Jesus, it really does look like a penis. Um, let me just get like a like a really like a, a yeah like a unit. Basically, like a real bloody unit. There it is. That's a clam, uh, as you can sort of see there. It basically looks like a hot dog bun um, with a brown, f large but flaccid penis in it. It's... It's, it's a bit Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, God. Um, God. All right, look, here she goes. Click for sound. <laughs> She so said, look at it, it looks like a fucking slap it, fucking jizz comes out the end. Fucking Jesus, this thing's jizzing all over the place, looks like a massive fucking bell end. I'm translating, I can speak the lingo. Oh, let's get him a gob. Oh, fucking hell, I've bitten his fucking helmet off. Jesus Christ. Well, she's not happy about it. She's keen, and that's, but... Oh, it's gagging. Little gag. A little bit more, get more in there, love. That's it. Oh, no, too much. Too far. Come on, keep going. Oh, yep. Wow. She's gone through half of it now. That is truly disgusting. Come on. Right, great. Okay, well that's the end of that one. We've you know held that one over your head for about the last two weeks. But um yeah, got it. God bless her. God, really disgusting though. Oh look, there's the chat. Nice stuff. Yeah, everyone there. Morning crew. Nice one, Dan Genby. Um, listen, guys, what have we got in terms of shower throwers? Oh, damn, some hot bits, actually. New gridlock. <sighs> New gridlock called uh, Opera. 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 Uh, giant VIP, State of Mind. Uh, that's of the State of Mind remixed EP on Eat Brain. Uh, New friction bit called Music House. And New Optive... Uh, called Gemini, all certified narky bits of gear. So keen on those, basically, keen on those. What should we start with? Let's have a little go on this friction bit. It's quite nice. Uh, I'm keen. I'm keen for it. Mm. 
hey, pleased to be providing content uh, for y'all's wank banks, as uh, is clearly seems in the chat. <laughs> Big Bildo, in with a donation. Thank you, brother. You don't know it makes sense. Right about now, stepping up, stepping in inside the rest of Bildy, did you uh, make that record that you sent me on email? Big Bildo. It's good, I like it, I'll play it. Yeah, confirming the Warhammer on this one, I think. Warhammer. Good to see that Lee's doing the hoovering for once. Well done, glad to see you're at least out of bed. Lee's hoovering at work. I didn't know you had a job. I'm impressed. Yes, Music House by Friction. Uh, he's a man. He lives in the East Sussex area. He has a hairdo. And he makes drum and bass. Uh, it's called Music House. Um, I like it. It's nice. I presume it's on... I'm going to go with Elevated. Uh, it's for... Um, I'd, 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 yeah, I'll just guess, isn't it? Just guess, I guess. I guess. Um, right, come on, let's get into the f- <laughs> fucking news. Um, here we are. Um, laptop infested with malware tops one million pounds at auction. Um, it's going to be have bought by some sort of Dr. Evil looking motherfucker, I imagine. A laptop loaded with some of the world's most crippling viruses has sold for more than one million pounds as a work of art at auction. That is a decent markup on what's probably about a 300 quid laptop. I mean, yeah, seriously, if you just get some really ropey, like, Dell PC laptop from P- Pedo World, I mean, PC World, and uh, then you just go and take it to a public Wi-Fi, connect it, leave it for an hour, it will basically be that laptop. 
like but without installing any bloody antivirus software on it just with a cup with a you know what's what windows is running windows xp there you go just get windows xp on it stick it just plug it into some you know into some internets yeah that'd be it basically million pound markup decent that's a side hustle that is that is a decent side hustle uh, <clears throat> the persistence of chaos is running. That's what it's called. The persistence of chaos is running six well-known pieces of malware, including WannaCry, which brought down the NHS in May 2017, disrupting 80 trusts across England alone. The old Windows XP machine is isolated and air-gapped with internet ca- with air-gapped with internet capabilities and, avail- and available ports disabled to prevent the malware from being spread. Sounds like a challenge to me. Um. Alistair Campbell expelled from the Labour Party after voting Lib Dem. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it was created by internet artist Gao Odong in collaboration with cybersecurity company Deep Instinct to make the artwork safe. Yeah, decent markup, man. Uh, all six viruses are believed to have caused financial damages in the region of 95 billion US dollars. Um, hey, we know all of this. We covered it anyway. Um, uh, Mr. Gao told The Verge that the work is intended to give abstract threats a physical meaning, serving as a kind of uh, bestiary, uh, bestiary, bestiary, God, I can't read today, kind of bestiary, a catalogue of historical threats. The online auction closed with a final bid of 1.3 million US dollars. Um, nice work, Dongo. Um, if it's not got Cookie Monster, then it's not an art. All right, well, thanks for that comment, Frank Darling, on the Metro. I'm pleased to have your input. I am interested in your opinions, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. Right, what else have we got? Um, Okay. Human-like robot will deliver parcels directly to your front door. Jeff Parsons of a website called The Metro uh, reports. Um, Food has developed a walking... Ford, sorry, has developed a walking bipedal delivery robot that could one day deliver parcels directly to your front door and hopefully, maybe one day, even toss you off. Uh, Eventually, the company says it will be used to pick up parcels from Ford's autonomous cars and then walk them to your doorstep. The robot, called Digit, um, has been engineered to cope with uneven ground and can also walk up steps. Uh, If it gets bumped, it's ready to to steady itself. I'll give it a fucking bumping. Uh, Digit was built with the help of US-based robotics company, uh, Agility Robotics, and can car- carry parcels weighing up to 40 pounds, 18 kilos. Uh, we're not sure exactly when the Digit robot will start strolling along our streets, breaking into your home and pegging you into next week, uh, but Ford says it is in the process of testing it at the moment. The company is increasing focus on AI and autonomous vehicles, even as it cuts back on human jobs. How long, how long do you reckon we got less got left before? Um, let's take this to its logical conclusion. Okay, all driving jobs go because obviously autonomous vehicles and like all you know lifty uppy downy sort of you know general labour factory things go. Um, that's basically everyone outside of the creative industry <laughs> has been replaced. Uh, so, uh, what are we going to do about that? I I would imagine that that would be the beginning of the war between the humans and the robots, where the proletariat humans will rise up against the evil robot bourgeoisie and break their fucking robot legs, I would imagine, uh, in an attempt to get their job back. Then were they going to make it what... I guess it would be criminal damage, won't it? But then there'll be sort of roving gangs of ex-lorry drivers just going round, black hoods on, just beating the shit out of autonomous vehicles. <laughs> Just throw it, well, because I guess you could, you know, if it's got no human in it and, and so on, you just throw Molotov cocktails at it, wouldn't you? Or just shoot its tyres out, things like that. Here's a uh, concern. I don't know how long this is like, I mean, you know, but the sort of thing that's likely to happen within 50 years, within our lifetime. I mean, I don't know how old the listeners of this show are. I would imagine between the ages of 12 and maybe 19. Um, anyway, Digit can work its way around obstacles thanks to its built-in sensors, something Ford showed off in its promotional video. Well, let's have a look at said promotional video. It's a minute and 42 long. Come on, buddy. Come on, champ. Great. Nice one. Pretty cool. Oh, smash those bits at the back. Chop them off. All right, just forget it. <laughs> 
Just forget it. Forget it. Honestly, I'm not interested in this, any of this bollocks. Absolutely had enough of it, Ford. Go, go, go stick it up your robot ass. Yeah? Stick it. Go and don't just roughly ram it into your robot gooch. Yeah? I'm like, oh, they are. What's he doing? He's running away from a potential mugger. Well, so he's running away from the cops, actually, by the looks of it there. And he's folding himself up to go in the back of a van. Yes, fine, fine hiding place, Mr. Robot. We'll find you. We'll find you and we'll do you in. Right, milkshake them. That's what we should do. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, right, what else we got? Yeah, come on in, let's get into this, mad bastard. Uh, former PhD student suing university for $3 million for loss of sex drive. Um, Stuart Perry, uh, one of my least favourite lad Bible quote-unquote journalists... <laughs> Uh, when you're in high school, studying during university, or even at work, you can go through some pretty stressful times. New paragraph. Whether it's getting past the, <laughs> when it's getting that pass that means you won't have to work over summer, uh, or that what was that? Why would that mean? Why 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 would that mean you wouldn't have to work? <sighs> or that performance review to get a promotion. These moments can drastically affect your health. New paragraph. Uh, but there's not much we can do about that except maybe just manage our time and stress levels better. Uh, or you could just sue the institution causing the stress and become a millionaire. Great preamble, Stuart Perry. I'm proud of you. That's exactly what Cull Deep Man plans to do after launching a lawsuit against James Cook University in Queensland. His accent is all over the shop. It's becoming problematic. Uh, the former PhD student is seeking $3 million in damages from the university for, for his mental torture that affected everything in his life, including his sex drive. Mate, get your act together. Seriously. It's appalling. Get your act together. Come on, mate. P people have done PhDs be before and not had to sue universities for loss of sex drive. Why are you so different, eh? The former PhD student is seeking $3 million in damages from the university for causing him mental torture, which has affected his life, including his sex drive. Speaking 9 News, speaking to 9 News, Stuart Perry, the 52-year-old said, Ah, we, oui, everything was affected, including my sex life and that. I'm no longer wanting to be on the bed to share bed with my partner and that, like, yeah, we. Oui. Uh, there's no such desire or nothing no, that, like, it's fucking a fucking raggy. If a university didn't have this kind of trick on me, a chick, what, they put a bloody voodoo curse on you? I don't think so. Uh, I'd destroyed, ruined my whole fucking career, and I like I should have bloody complete. What? <sighs> if the university didn't have this kind of trick on me, had they not destroyed my, ruined my career, I should have now completed my PhD. Oh, right, I see. So he's just making an excuse for why he hasn't finished his PhD. I appreciate that PhDs can be a bit of a pain. I have some friends who have been working on them for about 10 bloody years. Uh, not quite sure what they're expecting uh, to get off the back of it. Uh, are they going to be going around calling themselves doctor when they're not, you know, a medical doctor? I mean, uh, is that the only reason to do a PhD? I mean, I appreciate it's fun to check into hotels and stuff, you know, as doctor, Dr. Rankin. What are you a doctor of? I'm a doctor of, like, stuff and things. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'm doctor of social media. Okay, yeah, okay, great. Well, what were you doing? I'm a doctor of uh, G uh, uh, um, political, uh, political uh, social media, political stuff. Right, okay, um, good. Well, well done, great. I'm choking to death, by the way. Can you help us out? Uh, no. Uh, uh, plus, I've, I'm, I'm too skint. I've spent all my money on my PhD. Uh, Mr. Mann paid 20 grand to start his PhD in social sciences at the Queensland University in 2015. Uh, waste of money, I'm sure. Uh, however, the institution accused him of plagiarism and kicked him out. Oh, what do you know? Um, that's a weird sort of comeback, isn't it? Like, um, So we've read your PhD. Turns out, after running it through one of these bits of software that checks it for plagiarism, he plagiarised loads of stuff, so I'm sorry, you're not allowed to do it anymore. Yeah, well, um, you've. Um, I'm going to sue you. Right. Uh, for what, exactly? For... Um, Loss of sex drive. Right, okay. Um, his matter is now ongoing before the Queensland Supreme Court, where he plans to argue the prolonged harassment that the JCU uh, that hovered over his mind daily, day and night, adversely affected his sex drive, meaning his relationship could collapse. 
this is ridiculous. Like, so if you're getting, let's say, the police are investigating you for a crime that they think you did, and that causes you a lot of stress, could you then sue the police? Like, even if you did the crime, you're convicted. Could you, like, let's say you'd done a murder. Yeah, you done murdered someone. You murdered a robot. No, you murdered a real. You done a done a murder. Yeah, on a real person that you didn't like, for whatever reason. That's by the by. But you've done a murder, yeah? And then they arrest you for the murder you've done. And they got you banged to rights and stuff. But that's quite a stressful thing, isn't it? Get arrested for doing a murder. So then you could be like, well, look, you've really harassed me. Your interviewing was very stressful, actually. Very quite triggering. And I'm, I, I need to have some counselling and stuff now. And so I'm going to sue you, police. Sue you, bobbies. Yeah for the harassment I want five million quid you know they're like no but you done a murder and so we had to find out whether or not you done it it turns out you did it so you're going to prison no prison's very stressful so I'm going to want some money for that ridiculous I hope that the honourable supreme court will do full justice with me by awarding me the aforementioned full amount of compensation as remedy for all my losses and suffering alright so you think your sex drive is worth three million bucks I don't know, this could be, could be reasonable. Uh, James Cook University told the TV network that they couldn't comment on individual cases. There's no denying that stress affects a person's sex drive because your mind and body is more focused on survival rather than enjoyment. One American law firm claims you're able to sue someone for your loss of sexual activity in the right circumstances in New York. Oh, don't tell them that. Bloody everyone will be doing it. In every type of accident claim or medical malpractice claim, where you've suffered significant injury and were married, your attorney, your attorney will almost always include a claim for loss of consortium. Wow. Oginsky Law writes, wow. Uh, the tough thing, we'll be trying to prove that in the Queensland Supreme Court. This is a completely ridiculous story. Obviously, absolutely perfect for coffee and memes. I'm pleased to have it on the books. <sighs> I might sue Wesley Snips for loss of sex drive since he won't put out and now I'm so disappointed by it. Kind of lost my sex drive for humans. Maybe. Could be worth could be worth a go, couldn't it? Could be worth a try. Um, right, let's have some more of this music uh, that we play. Uh, let's have this new gridlock bit. It's freaking naughty, okay? Nice to start with the reverse symbol, isn't it? I mean, annoying to DJ, but nice just to have it on the books. Baiting some good PhDs in the chat. <laughs> PhD in futuristic Marxist queer theory. Get your job. Toad Rider saying, never thought of selling kids on the dark web. Good way to recuperate the cost. <laughs> Talking like a true anarcho-capitalist there. Why can't I sell my children? <laughs>
This is fucking rowdy. <laughs> Oh, good to see Sophie's into this one. Warm. Mustang Philly raising a good point. If you sell the kids, they can't work for you later. You have to think of the long-term investment. Yeah, no, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, well put. Mm. You do have to look at the long game, don't you? PhD in intersectional non-binary knitting. Very nice. PhD in postmodernist rectal expansion. Sure. PhD in Pageology, PhD in Sex Robot Malpractice. Opera by Gridlock. This is a naughty bit. Uh, it's on bad taste. Makes sense. PhD in footwear ballistics. Nice. PhD in feminist equestrian psychology. Mmm, holistic trans dance studies. It's got it all going on. Well worth the 20 grand. PhD in figging. Mmm, lovely. Uh, yeah, that's opera by Gridlock. That is not. I was put that as a content. Man, we've had some ridiculous bits this week already. We're only. Well, we're on Wednesday, but we're technically only two days in. What do we have? We've got that prolix bit off of yesterday. Do you remember yesterday? Off of yesterday. Serious, serious bit of gear. Um, what else do we have? That friction bit, that was nice. That was naughty. That DC Breaks remix of Airhead by Tantrum Desire. <laughs> Get in there. Um, hey, Andy, golly, nice for you to pop in. Bloody hell, late as ever. Um, uh, Roberto from Barcelona. Good to have you in the building. Right, come on, let's get into the rest of bloody this. What have we got? Um, All right, let's have a look at this Aladdin porno. An Aladdin porn parody has been released, and it's called Alad Dick. Dreadful pun. I'm really I'm upset by this. Anyway, 14,000 shares for Jake Massey. Can't argue with that. Um, you may be aware that a live-action remake of Aladdin starring Will Smith is hitting the big screens, um, but if you're the kind of person who prefers your magic carpets to be genital-based, sure, uh, then a new porn parody uh, may be more up your street. The creatively named Aladdin uh, features the uh, the titular star uh, as well as well as Princess Jizman. And Virginie. Right, okay. Oh, Virginie, right. And the trailer is quite eye opening. Come on in, let's get it on. Right. Go on, champ. Stop messing me around. Why you got why you got a hate on a player? Hey? Lad Bible videos, you're worse than YouTube. It's pathetic. 
Honestly. Get your act together. Seriously. It's appalling. It's not good, is it, guys? What I the just fuck walk are you? in. Some type of live action Sonic the Hedgehog? Now I'm a fucking genie. And I live in a fucking lamp. I got a big new dick that does a trick and makes soul ladies damn. Right, okay, I'm promise them. Because I'm supposed to screw a prince, but there just isn't one daddy enough for this royal boon. Oh, a laddick. Oh, me. You said you were single. No, I said you make me single. Down in my muff, I'm in the rough. Then you umped my camel toe. Oh, go in there and get me this silly old little lamp. You really seem to be downplaying the value of that lamp. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> AF. You 20th century millennials with your worldwide sand and your face scroll. I do cool genie stuff. Dick. Turn off, shall not pass. Harry Potter's a hack. I give him a smack. I thought bigger wishes out my ass. You wouldn't happen to be an evil guy. Did you see the latest Louis C.K. apology? Sounded sincere to me. Why not choose me? <laughs> so speaky. I wanna fuck him. You're embarrassed of being this makeup? Yep. Get high from his dong, his pop is a bong, his point is shoes a size 33, Prince Aldi. See you later, AC Slater. Swah! You bet your papa Ganush she would. Right, that's incredible. I 100% need to watch that. I might have to do a live stream. Maybe I could find someone to... Um, we'll do a live stream sort of commentary of it. I guess um, i have to have it slightly blurry. Maybe that would be one to do for the private, uh, for, for a whiskey of memes. <laughs> wow. Uh, then it'll just be the bit where... It, presumably there's going to be some actual pornography in it. And uh, just for that bit... Just be me, just try and not get a boner. Yeah, but that sounds great. Um, it, <laughs> um, but for those of you who look for a cracking storyline above all else when watching porn, feast your eyes on the below synopsis. It reads, drop your harem pants, your harem pants, and start rubbing your lamp because the most magical musical porn parody of all time is here. Aladdick is the live action, hardcore, sing along, blue genie filmed filled porn parody of Aladdin and was created by Wood Rocket and Pornhub, the horny folks behind Hamiltoe and Game of Bones 2. Wow. When Princess Jizzman goes looking for a prince to satisfy her royal genitals, she comes across Aladdin over and over again. Um, with the help of her Virginie, uh, and flying carpet, he disguises himself as Prince All D. Uh, but will J <laughs> but will evil Jafuck screw him over? Find out in a Ladek. Wow, that's whoa shit! They've done a Lego porn, the porn parody of Lego, the Lego movie. Nice, nice. Um, wow. Okay, that's there was a Brexit porn parody. Uh, about a hard Brexit, but some of, there were some very, very good puns on that. Um, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Perhaps I'll have a look during the next commercial break. This looks incredible. I th um, I'll be happy to take out a Pornhub premium membership for this. Uh, emphasis on the member. Uh, after watching Aladdin, you realise porn parodies actually turn out to be your fetish. Then here's a, if you, if after watching Aladdin, you realise porn parodies turn out to be your fetish. Here's the synopsis of the Lego Movie to get you all worked up. It reads: The Lego Movie has so much brick sucking and block stuffing <laughs> that you may question what the br what the brick what the brick the folks what the brick the folks at Wood Rocket and Pornhub were thinking. Nobody thinks Ramit is special. Even Wild Pie Hole has her doubts uh, until she gets a load of his big yellow pants brick. 
It is the penis of resistance. <laughs> uh, now it's up there uh, to go Fifty Shades of Yellow before it's too late. Have a good weekend. Wow, that was um, that's quite something. I'm, I yeah, wow. Uh, I'm pleased that these exist. That's uh, yeah. I do think that there's definitely. I think some of the um, monthly Patreon money could go towards a a Pornhub uh, <laughs> a premium subscription. I can write that off as a work expense, so I can review a Ladic uh, as a live stream. I think that would be be a reasonable use of funds. You know, after. Obviously, I have to talk to the accountant about that. Hey, Snips, do you reckon that's a reasonable use of funds? All right, cool. It's a go. <laughs> oh, my days. Um, all right, should we have a listen? So, we see what this American woman's been up to? Um, she says, uh, American woman says she'll never date British men because they're too short. All British men are basically four foot tall. Uh, they're ignorant and they drink too much, uh, according to one American woman. An American woman has said she will never date a British man because they're ignorant, short, and drink too much. Um, it's not technically racist because uh, the English aren't technically a race. Um, xenophobic? Could you go? I mean, it's certainly bigoted. I think we could all agree on that. Jenny Jacobs, 37. She's 37. Jesus, she looks about 50. Um, from Cincinnati, Ohio, came over to England six years ago. Um, um, but she's two years older than me. Anyway, um, came over uh, six years ago, um, but said men here drink too much and don't look after themselves. The mum of two is now married to 29-year-old Justin Hopkins, a fellow American who is more her type. Speaking to the, th- the son, the personal trainer said her bad experiences started uh, when she met someone on dating app Beautiful People. Okay, uh, and... Noticed when she met someone on dating app Beautiful People and noticed he never smiled. She told the newspaper, We were chatting on WhatsApp and I said, I see you're not showing your teeth. That's the uh, famous American accent. I see you're not showing your teeth in any of your punches. Do you have bad teeth or something? He never responded, so I guess it was true. Well, that's it. All Brits have bad teeth. That uh, is, I think we can all agree on that from that one experience on WhatsApp. I wasn't super attracted to him anyway. It just seemed nice, but I obviously offended him. Okie dokie. I'm a big teeth person. What? She, now, is she a big teeth person or is she a big teeth person? I, uh, literally, we're looking for Nashers at least an inch in length. At, like, proper... Proper horse boys. That's what she's keen on. I had to get braces because I hated my teeth. My tooths. So that's something that stands out to me. But dental hygiene is the least of her worries. My main issue with British guys, she says, are height, teeth and fitness. A lot of Brits I saw on beautiful people were really short. Or my height, I'm five foot nine. Uh, I didn't even look at a lot of their bios because I wasn't physically attracted to them. She's a real charmer, isn't she? I'd say Brits are up there with Russian men as the ugliest men on the app. (laughs) Fucking hell. Can you imagine the absolute outrage if this was a man describing uh, women? Self-proclaimed fitness nut also uh, claimed she was put off by binge drinking culture in Britain. Uh, He said... Um, I think that would be she said. Alcohol is a big thing in England. Uh, There's a lot of pubs, a lot of drinking. If you get wasted every day, or you're drunk every day, maybe you're a functioning alcoholic. It's a little bit much. Okay, so what's that? Every single man in Britain. Okay, they're short, they're drunk, they're ignorant. I noticed a lot of Brits I was talking to were drinking every single day. It's cold here sometimes. What are you going to do? On uh, 2013, Jenny, Jenny actually flew over to the UK to meet a British guy. But sadly, it didn't work out. That's it. They're all, they're all done. They're all freaking 80 million or however many of them there are. Um, she explained, We've been chatting for two months and he suggested I fly over for four days. He was awesome. He planned tours for us to do, but physically I didn't find him attractive. When we went out to bars, I noticed a lot of guys were f- weren't physically fit. Okay, so you're basing it just on men from in men in pubs. A lot of them had bad teeth. Uh, they tend to be short and stocky frame, not tall and broad-shouldered like the German frame, right? 
Some of them were really ignorant too. But after years of kissing frogs, Jenny finally met her Prince Charming, Justin. She hasn't looked back. Two weeks after we started chatting, he told me that he was going to marry me. <laughs> and I guess he was right. Oh, it's great to see that, you know, happily ever after, you know, that she'd been through effectively every single British man in the country and had found them all appalling that she's now, you know, found her true love. It was crazy. Everyone was like, no way. No, you have, no, now we have two kids. One son called Xavier and a two-year-old daughter called Miracle. Lobsters. <sighs> Imagine calling a child Miracle. I mean, Xavier, I mean, a, 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 geez, suffering, fuck. I knew what I was looking for, and then... Uh, and what I wasn't. I'm super particular, and I've been in the dating world for 15 years. Uh, so I was done. Um, you get a lot of... Um, something I've noticed recently on... I've been watching a lot of first dates. Uh, it's uh, sort of chewing gum for the eyes. It's actually a real emotional roller coaster. first dates. I find a lot of it very triggering. Um, the cringe stuff and just how awful people are on there, I, it triggers me terribly. I go, oh, get a lot of that. Ah, no, no. Ah, but then, when it's very sweet and adorable, oh, yeah, I mean, it really is an emotional roller coaster. But what I found uh, watching it is that there are a lot of people on there who are like, I've been dating for 10 years now, and it's just, it's this one disaster after the other. You know, I've, I just want to find someone that loves me for me. You know, I go on all of these dates, and then they never call me back. You know, it would just be so nice to find someone who loved me for me. It's like, well, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the data here. Been on all of these dates. Uh, is the problem with all of the all of the people you're dating, or is the problem with you? Maybe if you didn't, maybe like maybe if you got your act together, you know, and perhaps you know improved yourself a little bit rather than not being so dreadful, then perhaps people would be into into you. You know, like, no, I just want to find someone that loves me for me. Well, ugh. good luck. God bless you. <sighs> I don't know. Right, look, come on. Let's, enough of this. Come on, let's have this Optif bit. You know, people say that, you know, I'm just a bit weird and stuff, and, you know, but that's just who I am. I have 72 cats. They say I smell of cat's wee, but why, why is there not someone out there that likes the smell of cat's wee? They just want acceptance. You should love me for me. Imagine actually working on yourself to make you desirable to others. <laughs> Can you even imagine? This is Gemini by Optiv. Some cause for concern.
Choad saying, I used to teach kids to swim and the wildest name I had was Rainbow Waterfall. Incredible. I bet his parents were anti-vaxxers. I bet his parents think gender is a social construct. <laughs> She's a nice bear. Coming up at eleven, our gal, Power Jan positive energy bringing the absolute fucking genergy not genergy the genergy and now extended hour and a half show oh taking you all the way through till lunchtime don't unwrap your sandwiches just yet That's Optif. It's called Gemini. It's on C for C. Fucking yeah. I haven't got the right window up, but I'll just sing this little song until I get up the mud. In the VIP list Come on, shitty laptop That's it, come on You saucy VIP list, bitch um, Guys, end of the show Thank you very much for tuning in uh, Hang around for Power Gen's Positive Energy uh, Up until half past twelve uh, She will be bringing the good stuff The good news, the good tunes, the good vibes The good... <sighs> the good word of uh, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Um, I will be recording the second instalment of Jungle Ate My Hamster uh, this evening. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, listened to it already, it is an exclusive on the Patreon. Uh, and you can get it for just $5 a month. It is an audio book and it, uh, written by me. 
uh, story, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, telling the tale of a young, young hero just trying to make his way in the world, trying to make his way in the music industry while working some deeply unpleasant dead end jobs and having hilarious sexual mishaps. Uh, should we say? Uh, and you can get it. Yeah, if you go to the Patreon, uh, that's where you listen to it. It will be on there. You can get a private RSS feed, which will go in any podcast app. So you can have it as a podcast, or you can listen to it on the site, or you can listen to it in the Patreon app. There are many, many ways. All the instructions are on the site. And uh, everyone who is currently on Patreon gets to listen to it. So do, if you haven't already, go and hear it. Uh, it's good band. People have been very, very kind about it. Maybe they're just patronizing me. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to keep doing it. So the next instalment of it, chapters one to three are up there now. And I think chapters four till seven or something will be uh, going up uh, later. So looking forward to recording that in a bit. Anyway, shout out to the VIP list. Um, You're a fine bunch of humans. Also, up until Friday is the last time um, if you want your name in the founders list on the new app. Uh, for you to join uh, so bloody all to play for really at the Patreon crew um, join the ranks of Oliver Hooper Nicholas Gonclaus Tom Ryan Reese Mosson Squidgy Beats Parsons Paulie Hutton Kieran R Michael Kaczynski Matthew Tompkins Dave Long Joel Potter Carl Murphy Sam Howard Tony J Richard Patterson Jack Ah, come on, man. That, was, that wasn't good. Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Ansar, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chad Ryder, Andrew Heischerbeck, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blashford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hando Bartendo, Liam the Menace Underwood, Lady Squiffington, ah, uh, Liam Underwood. Um, Dan fucking Morris ago with no STDs Justin Mercer Ames MC Josh Williams Rob Humphrey Shibby T Coco Shiva Dan Elson Tyron Wilmore Mr. Pope Doug Progressive Cytron such as Superior to Drone Base Nicholas Lossie Damien Rennie Chris Bates The Build Carissa Bartholson Odin Bates Lee Fuller D Daniel Jemmy Faxis Alexander Cassidy Matt Wright Dylan Laws Grant Sullivan Not That Tom Robinson Subscribe on YouTube Greg Cornford Grace Sellers Dad Smasher Connor Smythe Kevin Kaiser Chris Shaw Mr. Happy The German Trance Overlord of DB Ranking Makes Uplifting Vocal Cytrons Under the Alice Cof- Cosmic Wasp What Cosmic Waft Keep it cool tall in the motor pool But don't let you meet loaf. Um, Nick Brock, Mustang Fetty, Sean Simpson, Robin Card, Sam House, uh, Hugh Downer, Sarah, uh, Sarah Hunt, The Hitchmuffs, L Tech, Will A, Ben Virgo, Den Tweed, Lupe Salazar, Big Wodge, uh, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, um, uh, Gordon and Liz, Carl Lewis, and Kyle Williams. Um, two, two couples there on the VIP list uh, The Hitchmuffs and Gordon and Liz. Fine. Um, fine, fine, fine humans um okay i love you all i will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m it's tomorrow thursday yeah it is so there'll be rankings records tomorrow as well and i like like it's worth tuning in for and i'll be getting out better doing that like okay bye see you hang around for jen show and that like okay love you bye